Hey, it's Rob and Charlotte from Dowdle Family Farms and in this video we're going to show you how to calibrate a no-till drill. Now the no-till drill that I'm using is the LMC Ag 78 inch, their lighter weight model, uh, but this same principle works on a variety of different no-till drills, particularly if they're ground driven. When you first get the no-till drill that you've purchased or rented, you'll note that it has uh, some recommended application rate charts based on the seed metering system that it has. They'll all look different, but it'll have a setting and some standard stuff. For example, this one uh, in the large seed cup, uh, the setting for rye, if you set it on number two, it'll put out about 72 pounds per acre. Those are guidelines. Seed weights and densities and volumes vary, uh, and even LMC Ag, in their particular note, you'll see tables and rate charts are guidelines only. They are designed to be an aid as setting point. You must do your own calibration as many factors causes rates to change. Now, uh, on this page, they have a way of setting application rates, uh, and they've got the formula in here. Uh, this was helpful for me i'm i think a little bit differently but this is one very specific way but it gives you a guideline to start the things that you'll need are a tape measure a small kitchen scale that'll measure in either grams or in tenths of an ounce i use uh, in tenths of an ounce and then you'll need uh, some small plastic bags and you may need a rubber band as well depending on your drill I'm always planting a mix of different cover crops and have to calibrate the drill every time. Uh, if you get a mix like from green cover seeds or from petcher seeds or whatever, they'll tell you the recommended planting rate and that's what you want to achieve. So now you want to figure out the math based on your particular seed drill. I'll use mine as an example, but the basic principles, the figures are different for each drill, but the basic principles will be the same. Let me switch to this Google Sheets spreadsheet that I created for my no-till drill. I highly recommend using some kind of spreadsheet. It took me less than an hour to set it up, and I'm not familiar with Google Sheets or Excel at all. One of the benefits of Google Sheets is that it's free, but you do have to be connected to the internet to use it. If you have Excel or something like that, you can have it on an iPad or even phone versions of it and have it in the field, and you don't have to have uh, access to it. I set this spreadsheet up for my specific drill, but I added some variables so that it could easily be adopted to other drills as well. First and foremost, uh, you need to measure the amount of seed coming out of one cup. I'll show you how to capture that in a moment. Then, uh, how many seed cups do you have on the planter, or how many rows is it? Mine is 10, so I have that. I have the width of my planter in inches. Um, is 72 and a half inches. Uh, I have 10 rows that are 7.25 inches apart, so that's 72 and a half inches. I went on and put it out there as a width of the planter in feet. That's just a simple formula uh, converting uh, 72 and a half inches to feet. And then I measured the circumference of the drive wheel. My drive wheel is horizontal and stretches across the entire drill. This is the drive wheel. It's 46 inches. Um, but whatever your drive wheel is, uh, if you measure the circumference of it around the outside, not across, um, mine is 46 inches. This is not necessary if you're going to just drive your planter say for 500 feet you can measure 500 feet drive it and you don't need to know the circumference of the drive wheel i just find it so much easier to lift the machine up turn the drive wheel 20 exact times and then i don't have to worry about it um, then i have the number of rotations of my drive wheel i usually do 20 occasionally i'll do 10 but 20 there's a little bit less air room for air if i turn the 46 inch circumference drive wheel 20 times that's 920 inches and then I have that converted in the spreadsheet formula to 76.6666666 feet. The square footage covered in that example is 46.19. Again, let's say I only did five rotations. I don't recommend those few, but you can see that the formulas automatically update all that information. And I did that just so that you'd see how the formulas are set up. I have the ounces of seed dropped in the sample, and all that is is 
the number of ounces times the number of seed cups. So if I have 20 seed cups, that would convert that to 20. Let me put that back at 10. Um, so now that measures the pounds of seed dropped in the sample. So that's the pound of seed, not in the one cup, but in all 10 cups. And then I have the samples percentage of an acre. 463 feet is 0.01 acres. So that's a little over one one hundredth of an acre. An acre is 43,560 feet. And then this formula, pounds per acre, combines the amount of total amount of seed dropped if I were seeding all 10 cups on that square footage sample and it converts it to pounds per acre. I'm telling you, this is the absolute easiest way to do it. The reason I like this is one, I can always go back and double check my formula if my formula is wrong. I messed up my formula the first time um, and I knew it wasn't right. I just couldn't figure out why, but I was able to go back and check the formula. If I'm trying to do this in my head with a calculator in the field, it's just much more complex. The other thing is if I know before I go out into the field, if I know that I'm trying to put out uh, say 100 pounds of this cover crop per acre I can go on and see just test a bunch of different formulas 1.8 ounces of seed gathered from one cup is 105 let's see what 1.7 ounces is that gets me at 99.92 .9 pounds per acre so I can go ahead and know when I go out in the field, hey, I need roughly 1.7 or 1.8 ounces gathered in one seed cup for 20 rotations. It just makes things much easier. The other thing is I've used this spreadsheet and this formula so much that I really know now that for my 20 rotations, I know that if I get roughly one ounce per rotate for 20 rotations, it's going to put me roughly at 58 pounds to the acre. And that, that gives me a real good target because I, I know that off the top of my head because I've done it so many different times now. I forgot my Ziploc bag this morning, but I'm going to have Charlotte hold the cup there while I'm turning the wheel. One, two, three, four, five, six seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. That's 1.4. I'm going to do a shortcut so I don't have to keep coming back here. Let's say if we put one ounce is 58 pounds to the acre. I was going for 54, but that'd be close enough. So let's go see if we can get 0.9 or one ounces. We're just going to keep doing this cycle over and over until we get it. Well, we finally got it that time. 1.0 ounces which gives us 58 pounds to the acre. That's close enough. It's about on that three and a half mark right there. So we're gonna go fill this thing up and then go to planting. Well, it's time to go planting. Thanks for watching the video. If you got some value out of it, please share it with someone else whom you think might get some value out of it as well. It'll help me and the channel out a lot. We have a lot of other videos on grazing cover crops with cows and pigs. And of course, if you really want to say thank you, you can join our channel membership as well. Take care and have a great day.